Hello and welcome to the Courage Permission Slip. I am so excited that you are joining us for another episode and I am very excited to have this very special guest joining me today who is uh, really a personal hero and is truly near and dear to my heart because she's my mom. Hi mom. <laughs> uh, Hi. Her name is her name is Debbie Myers Martin, and I'm going to share just a little bit about her because her list of accomplishments and accolades is very long and distinguished, but we're just going to share a little snippet. She is the Illinois State Representative for the 38th District, where she is a member of the Illinois Legislative Black Caucus, the Democratic Women's Caucus, and the Conference of Women Legislators. Debbie is also the former mayor of the village of Olympia Fields, my hometown, and she was named one of the 50 Women of Excellence by the Chicago Defender and was a recipient of the Outstanding Women's Award. And not only that, but she is just the picture of grace and elegance that many people aspire to you know I and I know I've shared this with you mom many people have shared like your mom just seems like she just floats so um so she's just a wonderful woman and I could be biased because she's my mom but welcome to the show thank you so much for joining me mom well, thank you so much for the invitation and the opportunity to, to be on the show with you and your, and your listeners uh, and your viewers. Uh, I am very excited to be here and very honored that you wanted to include me uh, on the show uh, to talk about courage and courage <laughs> permission, because uh, I think that that's important for people to um, consider that and to and to just make it part of their uh you know livelihoods and make make it part of their life so i'm very happy to be here excellent excellent and i mean that's a great segue because i kind of just want to dive in when you talk about how important it is for people to have courage in what they do and i'm curious to hear from you when you hear the word courage um, you know, what does it mean to you? What does it represent? Well, I think that courage is something that, you know, you have within, but it is a mental ability. It's a mental ability to resist hardship, to resist fear, uh, to resist opposition or difficulties. And so uh, I think that it's something that you have to develop I mean, you have to, it's almost like a muscle. I mean, you have to work at it to make it stronger and to make it more proficient in your life. But I believe it's a mental ability. Yeah. You know, I love that you said that it's it's a muscle that you work, right? Because you don't start out having courage. You don't start out having confidence. And um, you saying that actually reminds me of, there's a podcast I was listening to uh, and the inter interviewee was talking about how someone she had talked to and admired had said that confidence is overrated and you have to have courage first. You've got to build up courage and work your way up, which then lends its way to, to confidence. So um, it just, it is one of those traits that you don't start off just having it. You have to, you work your way up to it. Exactly. And, you know, and so to that point about working your way up, so you are an elected official, you are in the public eye, and, you know, and I think we've seen over, over the course of the last few years of how much elected officials are in the public eye, certainly on a national level, you know, yeah. with there are certain senators and um, representatives and obviously, you know, people in the White House who just they are the targets of a lot of public opinion. 
backlash, <laughs> praise, but more backlash because that's what we hear about. Yeah. And, you know, and so with that high visibility and being on, you know, a public stage, I'm really curious to hear from you, you know, how did, how did giving yourself permission to be courageous, how did that lead you to where you are and really what you're doing um, in your in your role? Well, I think it starts with your passion. If you are passionate about anything, whether that's volunteerism, whether that's advocacy, whether that's motherhood, you are going to uh, begin to uh, acquire courage to do certain things because it's necessary in order to be successful in those roles. So it's incremental. And I think that you don't think about it uh, per se, but you do know that it has to occur in order for you to be influential or persuasive or even successful in that role of whatever you choose. And so I believe that is how I started because I certainly you know, volunteered uh, when I first moved to the South suburbs, which is my love of, of the Southland. And so when I first moved, I became involved in citizens groups and community groups and school groups. And you just begin to, to feel comfortable in those situations, which allows you then to move on to other challenges, other opportunities, uh, because you, you're, you're, meeting, you're meeting your goals at every incremental level. And so I'm curious, you know, with, cause you know, as long as I can remember, you have always been so involved in the community, you know, all the way from softball to, you know, stuff that you were doing in Country Club Hills, like that is such a vivid memory. And you said something a little while ago about like, you know, you don't think about it so much per se, but I'm curious to know, like, when, when you did think about it or when you were first starting off and starting to build that comfort level, like what, how did you move past any nervousness that you felt about getting started? Cause you know, I think about, you know, when you were a trustee and then obviously mayor and now being a, a state rep, I'm just curious, like when you do think about it in, you know, in those moments before you take action, you know, how do you, how do you move past that nervousness? I, I believe that it comes again from within. You have to have a certain level of confidence in yourself that you have, you know, you have accomplished certain goals or that you have something to contribute. And I think that is what gives you the courage because you you say, well, I have something to contribute. I have something that's important that I think will be helpful to whomever you are trying to work with, uh, community groups or organizations or clubs um, or even you know your village or your municipality that you have something uh, to contribute that's important. Yeah, I, so that's akin to being connected to your why, right? Like knowing that you have, you ha as you said, something to contribute, you have something important to say, you have something to offer people that will be helpful or inspirational or motivational, or, you know, is going to help improve their lives, right? Like you're the, uh, you and I've joked about this, about how you're really like the economic development champion, right? Like that's your, <laughs> that's really your passion. And it is the root of so much of what you do. And so I hear you leaning on that to help you move past some of these, um, any nervousness that you might feel. And that's not to say that you don't still feel that nervousness. Uh, it doesn't like disappear, but you become stronger than it. it yes. You do not allow it to 
hold you back, but you still feel it from time to yeah. time. I know, you know, anytime that I'm invited to speak before a group, um, you have to do your preparation. You have to do your legwork. You have to do your research so that you have a certain level of confidence, but you still are like, are they really going to get me? Are they mm -hmm. really going to enjoy what I have to say? So that, that exists, but the courage is to move beyond that. Right. Feel the, feel the fear and do it anyway. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, when, when you are getting ready to do these speeches and, you know, are there places where, and you probably still, you just kind of answer this, but, you know, are there places where you still have to give yourself permission to be courageous, to take that step forward? Absolutely. Uh, I think that you have to give yourself permission to do any of the things that you do. And I'm hoping that people are, are doing the same thing that I do, which is you weigh. You weigh the pros and the cons, the pluses and the minuses. Uh, you weigh your buy-in, your compassion, your how passionate you are about what you're doing and your conviction that you know you need to do that. So all of those things must be in place uh, in order to give yourself permission to then move forward uh, in that courageous um, place, that that mm -hmm. courageous space in your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so to that point, for anyone who is listening, who has a goal, who has that thing that, uh, you know, that idea that won't leave them alone. They have this, um, you know, I, uh, passion for something, but the fear is a little bit too important right now. What would you say to someone who um, has that goal that they want to achieve, but are afraid to take that step forward? Well, again, I believe that it's preparation. Uh, I used to always tell my staff that I'm willing to confront any question, any person regarding, you know, policy, uh, you know, my, my, um, you know, my buy-in, my, my accomplishments. I'm willing to face that as long as I know, you know, what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And I only can know that if I've done the preparation. So, so I would tell staff, I'm like, well, don't put me in the position that I'm going to face something and I don't have the answers or the background knowledge. So it's the same way with any of your listeners or your viewers that, um, you know, need that extra boost. Make sure that you've prepared for you know, what may come. It may not come, but if you're prepared, then you, you have that, you have that confidence and that conviction that you can do it because you're prepared and, and never forget that you have to have integrity while doing that. Uh, so, so all of those things, uh, it's, it's a mixture. It's, you know, just like with anything in life, there's never just one answer. It's always got to be, you know, a collaboration of so many things. Uh, mm -hmm. But I believe that is what will give anyone that extra oomph to, to do what they need to do. Yeah, you know, I, I love that perspective of preparation. And that's something that comes up in coaching conversations too, where people have something that they want to move forward on, but you know, the common response that I hear is, well, what if I fail? What if, what if it doesn't go well? And the thing is, right, like there's only, you can only prepare so much, right? But if you get some of those basic points down, you get enough knowledge to be dangerous, then even if you don't, you know, achieve the, the exact goal that you set out to do, at least you've moved forward and you've gotten information that you can then use to prepare even better for the next time. But mm -hmm. 
you know, the, the preparation piece is, is something that is, is more powerful than I think people give, give credit to. Um, and it can, it can certainly, um, help ease the fear of moving forward. And never be afraid not to have all the answers because no one does. But if you, if people sense that you really care about what you're talking about and what you're doing, that you feel confident that, you know, this is something that needs to be done and you're passionate about it. First of all, they'll feel that from you. And secondly, they will accept the fact that you don't know everything, but that you are willing to pursue all things. Right. And people can tell when you're spinning, trying to make it look like you know the answer and you really yes. don't. And there, and and to your point about integrity, like there's a lot of integrity in saying, you know, I actually don't know the answer to that question right now. Let yes. me get back to you. Yes. That has more integrity uh, and authenticity and power, I think, than you saying, oh, I don't know this, but I'm going to, I'm going to pretend that I know it because then you just start digging yourself into a hole, I think. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. And even in the legislature, you know, if you are, you know, presenting a bill and someone asks you a question, you don't know every nook and cranny of the bill. So don't try to pretend that, but say, let me look into that and get back to you with an answer. And that is always acceptable. Mm -hmm. It's always Mm -hmm. acceptable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. Thank you for that perspective. So remember, everybody, you don't have to have the answers all the time. It's okay to not know. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Because you're working your muscle. <laughs> yes. Yes. You're building up the muscle of courage and confidence. Yes, absolutely. So good. So good. Well, um, mom, I have so enjoyed this conversation and you being a part of this with me uh, and sharing your wisdom uh, that I have known all my years uh, with other people. And I would love to hear from you, where can people learn more about you or connect with you? Well, I actually do have a website um, and uh, I don't know, I don't think it's a chat here, but it's uh, www.rep debbie myers martin.com pretty Excellent. simple <laughs> yeah super simple and Long, we will sh- simple. <laughs> <laughs> yes and that's fine and we will share the information in the show notes so that people can easily connect with you okay um, great well mom thank you again for joining me today it was so wonderful having this conversation on courage permission slip Well, thank you so much for inviting me. And again, let me state how proud I am of you in doing this kind of show and helping people in a way that sometimes is overlooked in terms of importance. But I I am so proud of the fact that you're doing this and that you are successful and that you are just right at the right place at the right time. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thank you everyone for listening in and um, we'll see you next time on the Courage Permission Slip.